Now this is a camshaft gear, also known as a cam phaser, removed from the FJ behind me. Let's talk about why I had to replace it and open it up. Let's get right into it. Now very quickly, I just want to apologize. They are doing some tree work across the street. So it's a little loud, but ultimately I just want to go over the symptoms my vehicle had and how I pinpointed this to be the issue. And we will open this up. So very quickly, this entire housing is attached to the camshaft. So as the vehicle is running, the camshaft is spinning. This is spinning along with it. Then we have two sprockets, as you can see. The smaller sprocket is for the smaller timing chain. Over here would be the exhaust, in this case, exhaust camshaft, and this is the intake camshaft. And then we have the larger sprocket. This larger sprocket is for the main timing chain. And as you can see here, the main timing chain essentially surrounds the entire perimeter of the engine. Now, all that this is doing is simply advancing or retarding the valve timing. And that's based on what the engine computer is telling the vehicle, or in this case, the cam phasers to do. In order to make things happen, the computer is sending commands to this guy. This is an oil control valve. There's a plunger that opens and closes. So when the plunger opens, oil pressure is sent to really the camshaft. You have these little, little holes inside the camshaft. And as you can see here, you have also little holes inside the cam phaser. The oil pressure ends up inside this cam phaser. And you will see this in a moment once we open this up. There are three cavities that fill with engine oil. And based on that pressure, it's either advancing or retarding the valve timing. This will make more sense once we open this up. Now, how do you know if you have an issue with a cam phaser? I know on earlier Toyota models, these are known to rattle on a cold engine. In my case, there was no rattling. There was no noise whatsoever, but I did have the check engine light on for a P0011. Now that's an over advanced trouble regarding the engine timings, too far advanced. So I shot a separate video showing step-by-step step on how to figure out what the heck is going on. And I started with the basics. You have to look at the oil control valve, how to test it, so on and so forth. Did all of that, verified that everything was perfectly fine. There's a filter for the oil control valve, verified that's not clogged. I replaced the engine oil, checked the computer. I even cut open the oil filter which was rather contaminated and I decided to replace the oil filter, put everything back together, started the truck. It ran a little bit better, but still it was not running right and I had the trouble code. So the next step is to check the timing and this is where I found the issue. On the left here is the exhaust camshaft. And that camshaft, when you time the engine at top dead center, should be pointed roughly at the two o'clock position. The other camshaft on the right is the intake camshaft for the intake valves. And when you time everything, the lobes of this camshaft should be pointing roughly at the 10 o'clock position. Really, the two camshafts should really point at each other, the lobes. Now, in my case, the intake cam was too far advanced. Look at the lobes. They're, they were roughly at the seven o'clock position. So that told me immediately, I have an issue with this. This is locked in the fully advanced position, fully locked. Now you can unlock it by removing this cam phaser along with the camshaft, the entire assembly, and you place it in a vise and insert compressed air to, lock, to unlock this. I did not want to bother with that. At this point, I just decided to replace the entire assembly, I think it was like 330 bucks from the local dealer, but now it's been a month, roughly five, 600 miles, past inspection, no check engine light, nothing is pending, so I know the truck is running right, but I wanna see what's going on inside of this. 
Now again, 07 is the year of this truck. The miles when I purchased it just under, whoops, 104,000 miles. Now you see this cavity in here? So the engine computer is directing this guy to send oil into this cavity. And this, let me unlock it. Right now it's locked. You see, there's a locking pin behind this. Let me unlock it. So this moves, there we go. This moves back and forth constantly as the vehicle is running. Fills up with engine oil and the computer is either saying, hey, we have to advance or retard the timing. Let's see if I can remove this. And now we have the cam phaser completely disassembled. Rather ingenious, the design. I love seeing how engineers come up with solutions to problems and how this is just a balancing act, constantly turning back and forth based on how much oil is in the cavity to adjust the, uh, the engine timing. Really very, very cool and fun. I love this stuff and I, I, I hope it's really beneficial to, uh, to you guys watching out there so you can understand how your vehicle works and uh, pinpoint you know any uh, repairs that you need to do. So wrapping this up, I thoroughly hope this has helped you understand how a cam phaser works. For me, it's always beneficial just opening up the part. You can see the cavity, how engine oil gets into the cavity and ultimately this is either advancing or retarding the valve timing. If you want more information, there is an excellent YouTube channel, The Car Care Nut, and he actually does the same thing. He disassembles a cam phaser. He has a camshaft there on, on camera. He's a certified master tech with Toyota Lex vehicles. Excellent, excellent, excellent content. I will include that video below. Also, he has a second video. I forget the title offhand. But uh, he has a client, or he had a client drop off a vehicle, and the vehicle had a clatter from the cam phaser, and ultimately the cam phaser was damaged because of low engine oil. Always make sure you have enough engine oil. Change the oil every 5,000 miles or six months. Oil is cheap. These are expensive, guys. You know, 350 bucks roughly each. And if your engine has four of these, you're talking 1400 bucks, and that's not labor. So maintain your vehicle. It's going to treat you well. And as always, thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next episode. See you then.